Jalen or Kevin be on minutes restrictions tonight? That's assuming that they're playing. <laughs> Is that your way of asking if they're playing <laughs> without <Yeah>. asking? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I wouldn't say minute restriction, but I'm gonna be conscious of their minutes. So if that means restriction, yeah, that's restriction. But how tough is that to balance just with you know the guys that you have out? It is hard to balance. Uh, but we went through it last night without those guys, so just having them on the floor, um, is good <laughs> in any capacity or however many minutes they're on the floor is good for our group. But how tough is it to balance with their desire to want to be out there? Yeah, now that's different. That's different because they haven't been on the floor for such a long time. Scoot, it's been a, been a while, obviously. Jalen played the one game and uh, recovered well from that. So, uh, yeah, they're both going to want to be on the floor. It's going to be exciting atmosphere, exciting game tonight. So they're both going to want to play a bunch of minutes. But I got to be conscious of the long term and not just uh, tonight. You talk about the addition of Dejan Giroux. I was very familiar to uh, Rockets fans here in Houston. Yeah, I don't really honestly know too much about him. He, I know he played here at U of H. I know he's from um, New Orleans, and um, he's had an opportunity to play with Indiana for a little while, Fort Wayne. Uh, so we'll get him in here and see what he can do. And this is a great place for guys like that. We've had success with guys who kind of come in and, and work hard and kind of learn how we do things. And you see with – Armani and uh, Garrison and Anthony Lamb from last year. I mean, they're guys who have opportunities because um, we do. If we're there's one thing we do, we we make players better here. How much time have you actually had with him today to <laughs> go over stuff, and, and how did you prioritize like what he needs to know? Yeah, I haven't had much time with him at all. Um, he was with us for our for our walkthrough. He's watching film with the with the coaching staff and. Um, yeah, I'd be surprised if he got in the game tonight. But if he, if he has to get in, we play a, a simple enough style, a fun enough style for someone with his ability to kind of hopefully play to his strengths. You went through this last year, so the, the difficulty of adding guys on the fly, whether you're short-term, long-term, or whatever it might be. Yeah, I mean, Rafael always does a great job of bringing people in who can play. So um, usually it works out pretty good. Usually you think about guys that we had in last year where there's Mason Jones who had like 28 in his, his first game in San Antonio or, you know, Cam Oliver or Cam Reynolds. You know, we just had a bunch of guys in and out, but they they all had an opportunity to play and play well. Statistically, the fall off that you guys have had on defense lines up pretty well with when Kevin went out. Now that he's back, what does he do for you on that end of the floor as far as defense at the park point of attack? Yeah, it's that's a really good point, and that's something I've been talking to him about as far as his improvement from year to year. Last year, his defense was wasn't something that anybody was really remarking about, but now. It's remarkable that he has uh, kind of turned the corner defensively. So it's his ball pressure. It's his size. Uh, last time we played the Lakers, he guarded LeBron some and did a, did a good job. So um, him trying harder, him using the gifts that he has and uh, applying initial ball pressure as the ball is brought up the floor uh, kind of gets everybody else in the right spots and going because you see that first wave – well, ball pressure, it, it helps everybody else on the floor. Given how much time school is missed, is there anything particular you're looking for seeing from him to great Same thing as Jalen. When Jalen came back, I just want him to play. I just want to enjoy being back on the floor, enjoy being on the floor with his teammates, enjoy the atmosphere that we're going to have tonight. Um, and not press, just, uh, you know, attack and either make a play for himself or his teammates, and he does that very well. And then on the defensive end, as we were just talking about, setting the tone, you know, with this ball pressure or, um, you know, depending on what we do with our game plan. Coach, you didn't have a lot of time to be able to get adjusted to some of those players like Knicks and Queen coming from playing the last night, now you got to play tonight. Were you able to point out some things as far as improvement is concerned during walkthrough and field study? Um, not yet. I'm going to get with those guys. I know my assistant coaches are on it as far as those two guys and making sure that they're uh, learning from, from last night. But what's such a quick turnaround, it's hard to kind of get to all that. We will, after tonight's game, we'll have two days where we can kind of dive in and make sure that they're 
good and on the same page as everybody else. But they made the most of their opportunities last night. Probably won't get the same opportunity tonight with Jalen and Scoot back. But uh, I was proud of those two guys. Besides making sure that KPJ came back and was physically ready to go, it was, did you have an area of focus for him specifically during this last stretch that he's been out? Uh, yesterday I sent him a, a clip of his ball pressure. Um, it was dang, I can't remember who it was against, but it was like he fought over the screen and then he got right back in front and the ball was passed and then it was moved back and he cut the person off. And I was like, this is what we missed. <laughs> and he was, and he responded, he was like, well, I'm ready to go tomorrow. So let's, let's get it. You know, he's excited to be back. So that part of it is, like I said, I'm super proud of him and his growth and his development, but the, the corner that he's turned defensively is uh, really, really good and gratifying because it's not like a young guy to make a, big jump defensively it's like a young guy to make a big jump offensively and then the defense comes later you know but for him uh he took a lot of pride this summer on doing all the closeout drills that we did and working on the ball pressure and it's translated it's really for, uh, lebron james especially since he's been playing some really good basketball the last six seven games it's never easy <laughs> It's never easy. It wasn't easy when uh, he was younger. It's not easy now that he's a little bit older. He puts so much pressure on your defense. His greatness is very much in his passing and his ability to make those around him better. Um, you know, he still has a quick burst in transition and has all the size and all the craftiness and, and everything. So, yeah, preparing for him is, is a beast and, and hard, but... Um, there's a few things that you have to do. You can't let him get out and transition and get those easy buckets. You have to try as hard as you can to limit his pain attempts and then his free throws. Giving him the easy buckets is what makes him even better than he already is. But, uh, but yeah, he's a load, and he always has been. Stephen, is there anything at all new on the injury front slash health and safety protocols beside the guys we know that are on the list? Or is it, that's just what it is right now. That's just what it is right now. How are the four doing? They're good. Yeah, they're good. Um, yeah, symptoms are minimal, if, if that, and uh, everybody's fine. Are KJ and Jay Sean, are they here or are they still in Charlotte? Uh, I believe that they are here. We were working on that yesterday, and I haven't gotten an update on to, as to where they are. But um, as of yesterday, they were supposed to be on their way back here.